I'll get on it. How will you end it? If you hope to slay the Archdemon with wit, you may want to arm yourself first. You say you are a great warden. I have heard stories of this order. Great strategists and peerless warriors. That is what we hear of the wardens. So far, I am not impressed. Evidently not. It remains only to see what you are here for. I once heard a really old legend about how the Hound Warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed them a bari, the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. Oh, like you can tell the difference. Well, you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. Something on your mind? Not unless they were asking me for a favor. Well, there was that one time in Ganaro, but those women were <laughs> not like you. Why? Is this your way of telling me you? This is. I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. I thought that I might give it to you. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. I guess it's a bit silly, isn't it? I just thought, here I am, doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a great warden since you're joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death. Fighting and tragedy, I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. Oh? You're lost then. All the ladies go on and on about how suave I am. I don't know how you can resist me like you do. Oh look, is that a cloud? I expect rain. <laughs> so, all this time we've spent together, you know, the tragedy, the brushes with death, the constant battles with the whole blight looming over us. Will you miss it once it's over? I know it might sound strange, considering we haven't known each other for very long, but I've come to care for you a great deal. I think 
maybe it's because we've gone through so much together. But, or maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe I'm fooling myself. Am I fooling myself? Or do you think you might ever feel the same way about me? soon for this. Good. I'll take that as a good sign. Make his breath, but you're beautiful. I am a lucky man. Now, <clears throat> let's get back to we're up to before, lest I forget why we're here. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know that I would put it precisely that way. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased. For three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way. Buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your training, you die. Oh, I don't know about that. The crows who are actually good enough to survive come to enjoy some of the benefits. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect, it gets you wealth, it gets you women, and men, or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. And here I am, happy to be had. Isn't it wonderful how things work out that way? Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. Your desire to Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk, right? Fair enough. Off we go then. I have a thought. Ah, <laughs> such wit. Truly, you and Mother should form a troop of jesters and tour the countryside. We have an opportunity that I believe we should take advantage of. To the point. My mother was once divested of a particular grimoire by a most annoying Templar hunter. It occurred long before I was born, but even today, Flemeth speaks of the loss with great rage. With the circle of magi in such disarray, it occurs to me that this might be the perfect time to recover the tome from their possession, for surely it eventually ended up in their hands. It did not occur to me when we were still in the Mage Tower, I wish it had. Truly, Mother has assumed for a long time that the tome was lost forever. I only remembered it now after thinking what treasures might be found in the Circle of Magi's Tower now, in its condition. Flemeth is a sorceress of legend, is she not? 
No doubt tis considered something dangerous, perhaps best locked away somewhere. Good, I am most interested to see its contents. The grimoire is leather-bound and adorned with the symbol of a leafless tree, should you come across it. If not, however, then I shall simply put it out of my mind. Your desire is my command. Well, we're in camp. Now's as good a time as any to talk. Oh, <laughs> you want to right now? Well, who am I to refuse? 